We'll move on now to our next speaker who will be joining us virtually, uh, Edward Shi. Edward's a data scientist at Starboard, where he's part of the network analytics team that designs products and pipelines to support network governance in the Filecoin ecosystem. He's passionate about geometry and number theory, but today he'll be talking to us about Filecoin analytics for network governance. Take it away, Edward. Thank you, thank you for the introduction. Uh, hello everyone, this is Edward from Starboard. Uh, today I'm going to give a talk about Filecoin analytics for network governance. All right, so let me begin by my talk by making a simple observation that Filecoin has actually become the most vibrant data economy in the Web3 space, with a committed storage capacity over 15 EIB and active like amount of client storage deals over 70 PIB. Now, one of the key issues arising from such being such a huge complex adaptive system is that how do we properly govern, right? Govern such a huge complex adaptive system, especially uh, with the case that you know we're adopting a community-driven a uh, democratized uh, sort of governance framework here. So like there is, in, in some way, there's really a strong need for an accurate, comprehensive and open source data analytics infrastructure upon which collective decision-making, real-time uh, collective decision-making can be made. So um, in particular, right, um, we as a team, we've identified a few key challenges uh, intrinsic not only to the Filecoin governance uh, sort of framework, but also to Web3 governance in general. And we believe that, you know, these common challenges uh, for, th for those data analytics is precisely the key solution to addressing those challenges. So let me go, go through them one by one. Uh, firstly, observe that each Web3 network is essentially an island economy that evolves decision making from individuals and organizations with essentially different uh, preferences, goals, and horizons. Therefore, what this means for the governance team is that they really need to understand how to balance the trade-offs of different decisions, given that agents in, in, the, in the environment basically have different pre uh, preferences, goals, and horizons. For instance, right, uh, say the governance team wants to introduce a Falco improvement proposal, uh, uh, what we commonly know as FIP, you know, they need to have a very clear understanding like uh, whose benefits, whose expenses, you know, how will this particular FIP introduction impact the sort of entire network, not only from aggregate, but also from actor specific level. Um, secondly, you know, despite everything is publicly available on chain, public information is actually not properly diffused. This is a key problem. So if, if I ask you a question, like what is the current state of a network? What are some population statistics? You know, what are some of the micro trends and issues existing in the network? Um, there, we need expertise or we need a middle layer to actually extract that kind of on-chain data insights from the blockchain architecture and make them available to the general public. Uh, third key challenge slash observation is that, you know, governance doesn't have to be emotional and political. The key really is to have an accurate and robust data analytics upon which the community can make informed decisions for their shared goals and values. All right, so uh, what I just talked about is basically establishing that uh, network analytics is important for governance. But how do we proceed, right? Um, how do we proceed, go from the first principles into actually building a data pipeline slash a product, uh, basically making the insights into product? Well, we start from the following two initial observations. Uh, specific to the Filecoin, and we actually derive some systematic strategies from these two observations. Firstly, notice that similar to Web2 data solutions, Filecoin is a data economy consisting of a globally distributed network of servers and clients. This implies that like Web2 services like AWS or uh, Azure, we need to track op operational intelligences traditional to the Web2 uh, data service provisions. Things like storage uptime, uh, reliability metrics, which is also tied to the fantastic talk, talk Tom just gave. Uh, we, we need those like metrics, right, to, to actually properly evaluate the effectiveness of, of the Web2, like uh, actually the storage provision service. We also need a very clear KYC, things like, you know, who are the top, you know, addresses that are making the most interactions on the network. Now, uh, on the other level, right, this is a second observation. 
Unlike Web2 solutions, Filecoin is the world's data center. What does that mean is that essentially it's a decentralized layer one protocol, right? Uh, basically trying to um, democratize the entire storage provision, data centers or data economy services to everybody uh, in the uh, participants on the network. This means that we also need to track intelligence or Intel specific to the blockchain analytics. Stuff, so metrics like circulating supply, gas, block rewards, right? Those are the concepts or metrics, statistics, in, uh, basically native to the blockchain uh, ecosystem that are not traditionally available in Web2 um, basically services. All right. Uh, so now we, we've actually uh, moved on from the observations. Uh, here's our roadmap sort of deriving, derived from that uh, two observations. So here's what we, we did and we thought is a good roadmap uh, for the making everything happening. Firstly, we need to understand the Filecoin's protocol structure and basically build expertise in analyzing the state synchronized data, right? So basically we need to uh, you know, call some uh, RPCs and grab the data out, build databases. Uh, next, we're going to map the on-chain data to the corresponding protocol features and design specifications. Right, those are available usually in the source code or open source. Uh, in the spec, we're going to map the on-chain data to different parts of uh, specific features or protocol. Then we're going to translate the know-how into actionable uh, insights, charts or statistics that actually support decision-making for relevant stakeholders in the ecosystem. Uh, last point is the most important, right? After we did the first three steps, we need to build a comprehensive data analytics platform that provides intelligence across different angles, across all the different fidelities. So with the principles and methods and roadmaps uh, discussed above, very probably we introduced the network house dashboard. So uh, this is a, a, our factory uh, product that usually, you know, um, basically try to analyze, use like analyze the network's house state uh, through different angles. Uh, all of the things we dis I, I've just talked about, discussed the principles and methods, it's all in there. So the best way, we're, we're actually trying to provide a section-based user journey, where through the different sections, we provide a very clear way on how we think uh, the governance team should approach uh, analyzing the current state of the network. And so the best way to summarize the product, this is a one-shop comprehensive intelligence platform that provides not only current, but also historical data analytics for the ecosystem, especially for the governance team. So let me just briefly uh, uh, give a tour, introduce each subsection and the information we capture. So uh, we're looking right now at the first section, which is the, which is the capacity and service. This is the place where we track you know, information related to storage provision on the network. We ask questions like, you know, uh, for storage state, right? What is the active amount of storage uh, currently existing in the network? How many sector commitment, storage capacity commitment has been sort of uh, committed on a daily basis? We also track uh, reliability indices, right? Um, the, the stuff Tom just talked about, you know, uh, if there are faults happening, right? How quickly are those faults getting recovered? Uh, what is the average fault time distribution overall on an aggregate level uh, for the network? We also track uh, service provision economics, which uh, tells us about, you know, uh, if I'm a storage provider, I want to, you know, put a storage into this network, you know, what is the rate of uh, investment versus return? Uh, what are some of the current block rewards I'm going to like get if I, if not, now I want to like basically commit. So um, moving on, we have the next section, which is the circulating supply, right? This is, this tell, actually tells you about a token flow, how many fill, uh, let's say, for, for example, gets mined, how, how many fill gets vested, how many fill gets locked or burned on a daily basis. And you also, you can also do data drilling, right? That's the purpose of, of the entire uh, the process. You can understand, you can basically read about the component breakdowns for the aggregate statistics you find interesting. For instance, you can have a, a detailed look into the different components of fill locked, the amount of fill get burned, all of those like, like detail breakdowns are, are there according to uh, the protocol specification. So moving on, we have uh, storage demand and deals, right? This is the demand side of the equation. Uh, here we track stuff like, you know, what is the deal inflow? What is the deal outflow, current and historical? 
We also track stuff like, you know, how do we do KYC? Uh, even in a relatively anonymous environment, you know, we want to identify the top addresses and making the most deals uh, out, uh, within the ecosystem. Uh, next is an exciting topic, uh, network usage and gas. Uh, we track, uh, you know, what, what is the current uh, base fee and, and also tracing back to the like, past 24 hours, uh, corresponding to the EIP, equivalent to the EIP 150.59. Uh, you know, what is, you know, we, we, we kind of see the base fee, right? We also want to understand, you know, if there is, a, let's say, if there is a base fee spike, what is the gas uh, usage that actually contributes, uh, basically can be attributed to that particular base fee spike. Uh, so this is where we put things like gas usage breakdown by methods, telling you a volume comparison. We also try stuff like aggregation, right? Basically aggregation is a scalability technology innovation uh, the team has made, um, the PL Filecoin team has made uh, for proof of storage, you know, want to track, you know, once this innovative, fantastic technology is out, how often are people actually using this? Storage provider actually using this to reduce the amount of transaction cost. Uh, so uh, I've just talked about like a little about the structure, the theory, the principles. Let me just give a particular use case on how uh, sort of product like such can help with like uh, Web3 governance. So um, this is a real, time, real life use case. So in the past few months, uh, starting January 2022, there has been uh, various initiatives in the Filecoin ecosystem focusing on driving Filecoin plus deals adoption uh, and in, in basically increasing the network utility. For those of you who are not familiarized with the term, Filecoin plus deals are deals with a better D, uh, KYC and tighter identity verification. Uh, so let's just imagine that if I'm a business analyst and I'm asked to write a report on the initiatives uh, so trying to drive out the Filecoin Plus adoptions, but at the same time, I'm asked to quanti basically quantify the impact of the various strategies uh, developed to drive the, the adoption. Here's how I, can, how I can use the dashboard. Next page. So the first place I'm going to go to uh, when I wake up in the morning uh, is I'll go to the deal, storage deals section uh, in, the, in, the, in the dashboard, and I'll observe that the, this chart called newly committed deals. This actually tells you, you know, how many deals get uh, flow, flow into the system on a daily basis. This actually tell me as a hypothetical analyst that, you know, over the last three months, 5 point plus deals has actually taken over majority of the deal growth. And you see, you can see, you know, by the green amount of green area presented in this chart, and is not actually Filecoin Plus deals now accounts for over 70% of all of the active storage deals uh, outstanding. So, um, you know, I'm a curious analyst, right? I don't just want to just stop there. I want to go to the other different parts of a protocol and basically build a multi-dimensional analysis. So this is where I can go check into the storage uh, provision section and see that, you know, uh, during the past month, month or so, we actually also see some uh, spike in sector onboarding activities, which tells us, right, right like there is a uh, event correlating with a higher deal adoption is that actually uh, more storage providers are, are thinking about, you know, uh, is either extending or like uh, joining the ecosystem to provide like a more service provision coming. Uh, meanwhile, if I look going to the gas and uses section and I, if I uh, analyze closely the daily network fee breakdown, I will also realize that another thing correlating to higher deal adoption is that the network is actually getting busy again. Uh, judging from the amount of like uh, fees uh, activities, which is a direct indicator signal telling you how busy the network is. Uh, next. So uh, if say our analyst right, uh, is not satisfied with the overall statistics or trends and wants to do a more careful KYC, well, uh, I can just then track the actor highlight and basically identify the top addresses that have the highest amount of participation. So here on the screen, we're seeing uh, who are the top 10 clients uh, classified by verified deal bytes. Also, who are the top providers actually actively taking Filecoin Plus deals. Uh, okay, next. So uh, if our analyst wants to further drill, right, wants really to get to the bottom of this, uh, he or she can track basically the individual client page and identify the protocol specific behavior and patterns. Uh, this is actually related to incentive design, right? What we're seeing here on the screen is a three stage 
uh, basically a uh, KYC funnel. This is called Filecoin Plus verification protocol in which there is a notary who allocates, uh, who sort of approves clients' uh, initiatives to actually, you know, store, verify storage deals in the system. So uh, we thought about, you know, how can we capture uh, the transaction patterns in terms of graphic-based uh, method. Is graph-based method is a great way to basically uh, concentrate our, our analysis on and basically build a local level transaction graph analysis for each of the client existing in the system. So uh, if the, our analyst wants to dig further, that's where he or she can look. All right, um, open source insights. You know, we're in Web3, all of the insights are supposed to be open source, right? Rem remember I talked about, you know, not all of the public information are properly diffused, but now that we have done the like the, the, the middle, middle layer work in between, we can just uh, build open source these insights for everybody to participate in the ecosystem. So uh, we're currently testing, we actually released a bunch, uh, but we have like very positive feedbacks from people from Masari. Basically, we're open sourcing insights in terms of data field notebooks and charts onto this platform called Observable HQ. So for everyone who wants to build their own analysis, they can just treat us as basically a doing analytics type of uh, style of like API and just download the data, do their own analysis. So exciting opportunities. Uh, we, like, uh, as I said, right, Filecoin is such a fantastic ecosystem. There are so many uh, aspiring challenges, data science challenges, um, the engineering challenges, like crypto cryptography challenges we can do. But some of the stuff uh, more related to my line of work is we, we have tons of visualization, modeling analyses, uh, just as Tom just presented, right? There's tons of problems in terms of intelligent uh, sector reliability profiling engineering. Uh, we have the data available and just about how we can build the best model of this. There is also questions related to computational game theory, incentive design evaluations and evolutionary games. And also I just uh, gave a quick snapshot on that we can do a lot of transaction graph analyses on uh, this sort of open public chain uh, as well. So uh, also stay tuned for Filecoin Virtual Machine, which I believe uh, one of the next speakers will get into more closely. Thank you. Uh, please, uh, we're hiring, so uh, you can uh, visit us at our website and contact us. And I just, you know, uh, hope, for, hope, hope there are more people will join in uh, Collective Build a Fantastic Ecosystem. Thank you. Wonderful. Thanks for that, Edward. For that really, ex this is very exciting opportunities for anybody who's interested in data science or data visualization. Definitely that last slide about exciting opportunities. Very true. We have time for questions to the speaker. Excellent. So I love the dashboards that you guys set up. Um, can you talk a little bit about um, how people are using it already? Like, are are you seeing some good responses? Are people engaging with it? Are they building on top of it? I'm just curious what kind of interest you're seeing from the community in these kinds of visualizations and insights. Uh, yes, OK. Uh, so a uh, couple of examples, right? Uh, in, uh, basically, we have seen basically uh, people inside the ecosystem, right? Mainly the governance team. I, I actually know a, like a few uh, stakeholders on the governance side who check out Dashboard on a daily basis. And uh, there is a lot of stories how uh, it, they begin first observing a couple of changes uh, in, the, in the charts they find interesting. And that ends up in an ecosystem-wide uh, discussion on you know, what is the current thing what is the top like strategies the entire system should focus? So one example is uh, we've actually through our dashboard, uh, one of our a few stakeholders has actually realized you know while there's a lot of sector re uh, retirement our aspiration kicking in uh, starting January and after after they saw that particular signal change on the dashboard, um, they sort of very quickly responded to it and just you know. Uh, start building more initiatives on Filecoin Plus deal adoption and also sector onboarding rate. This is a, I think, is a perfect example illustrating this. We also have external adoption of people outside ecosystems. Uh, for instance, Masari, uh, when they write the first stage Filecoin analysis, uh, ana analysis report, they were uh, using our like observable HQ API to build their own analysis. Yeah. Any other questions? While you're thinking, then I have one actually about consumption patterns of your data. Um, 
You mentioned that you have both current and historical data available for the Filecoin ecosystem. Do you have a sense of how long data stays fresh? Are people still making a lot of requests for data from near mainnet launch, or is it mostly clustered closer in time? That's actually a fantastic question. You know, uh, right now the main, there's like a year and a half, right, since the mainnet launch, and we've actually seen a request from stakeholders. Let's keep everything historical. Now, now as the ecosystem develops, right, as the network develops, there will be the amount of um, the amount of like data the data size right plus uh, duration is going to be a challenge for us. So we've actually been discussing uh, internally how our engineers we can you know basically design a good UX experience for people. You know, for instance, right when you guys first arrive, you will see like a three months or six months uh, snapshot of the charts you'd like to see. But there are also options uh, on the on the on the UX side that supports you know if you want to see the full historical we can also show that yeah but so far given the short time frame everybody is like let's just do historical great thanks again Edward any other questions to the speaker before we <clears throat> move on.